This is lawn bowling, only slight relation to ten pin bowling, and this here are members of the Green Falls Bowling Club partaking in a Parents v Kids tournament on a sunny September afternoon. Hi, my name is Daniel Watson. Currently, I'm in Green Falls, an area of the town Cumbernauld. Green Falls was a half council and half private estate built in the 1960s and 1970s. Here in Green Falls, life moves pretty slow. I've lived here for most of my life, attending primary school all the way up to high school in this area. I go to this local pharmacy, I see this church on my way to school, and I take a bus from this stop to college. Most days, whenever I'm on the way to our lovely town centre, I would walk uphill for about 15 minutes, and every single time I would pass this building. And like most residents of Green Falls, I wouldn't pay any mind at all. Until a year ago. I don't know why, but I stopped in front of the gate and I said to myself, You know, I wonder what this is. And then I simply kept walking afterward. To give a history of sport is not the easiest thing, but the origins of bulbs actually can trace back to ancient Egypt. And not just lawn bowls, but various variations of lawn bowls can be traced away back to ancient Egypt. Like mm, a lot of sports, is a bit of a uh, not such a nice past in the way the game started off. There's a term within bowls that we use that where we've got the mat and we've got the jack, and the area up round about where the jack sits is always referred to as the head. Um, I think people's imagination can work out from there what happened back in those days. There are, there are loads of stories within Bogues, Sir Francis Drake being one of the most well known in history for Bogues, where he was playing Bogues at Plymouth um, when the Spanish Armada was spotted. But he was heard to say, we still have time to finish the game and thrash the Spanish too. And he continued to finish his game. So that's one of the best stories I think from history referred to with Lord Bogues. It was a sport often played by the royal class, such as the Duke of Suffolk, until the lower working class took up the game as a way to pass the time. But in the late 15th century, it became associated with gambling and alcoholic hooligans, and due to higher royalty bias, it was banned. Naturally, the upper class royals still continued to play the game out of view of the working and middle class. The bans on the sport lasted until the 18th century, being lifted in 1845. At this moment in time, the oldest surviving bowling green that's still around today dates back to 1299. It is located in Southampton. The Lawn Bowls rules were, were brought into effect. It was 1864, written by William Wallace Mitchell in Glasgow. William Wallace Mitchell was 11 years old when he first played on the green of Kilmarnock Bowling, which sadly closed down in 2021 after 281 years in operation. This bowling club, I think, as I mentioned, is 40 years old, opened in 1983. You'll be amazed at the amount of people within the Green Falls area still don't even know the bowling club exists. There are there are a few clubs within the Cumberland vicinity. The bowls of Cumberland has been getting played for over 150 years at Cumberland, and that might be a surprise to people. But Cumberland Bowling Club um, has been around for just over 150 years. It's, there's there's a good history within coming out on books. Um, I've known about it for a number of years. Um, one of my pals used to play in it um, when we were all, all kids um, round about the streets, and he played in it. But I never ever, never ever fancied playing it. I was too busy with football and things like that and golf. But um, my dad then joined it probably early 2000s, maybe just before the 2000s, um, and then started thinking about it a bit more and more, and then eventually took the plunge and joined in 2006. Uh, I found out, well, my dad joined the club in 2006, I think. So I kind of found out just by being a child and kind of being in the area. But I joined when I was about five years old. It was the first time he kind of brought me up and I started playing. It was through my family initially. Uh, my granddad played bowls for three years and then my dad got into it. And then um, my, my two uncles played it. I got into it. So I was about 11 year old before I started getting into bowls. Definitely, it's just kind of made my joy of bowls a bit more greater because it's getting to see them take, have their own take on the game, which is kind of odd to say because obviously it's just 
one sport you didn't think and you don't think it would be different takes on it but seeing them discover different things that they like about it it's kind of made me enjoy it more as a whole so teaching them has definitely made my enjoyment of the game greater for a lot of time goes into it but it's very very enjoyable and very rewarding when you see them out playing and enjoying the coaching sessions this year in particular where we've went into a lot more competitions with them it's extremely rewarding to see them out there playing to a very good standard as well I think it's always been difficult to get younger ones into the bowling clubs because the, the stereotype around it is it's an old man sport um, but I think most of the time it's through families if you've got a family member that plays bowls for instance your dad, your mum, granddad, grandparents, whatever is asking them to come along because I've managed to get my son involved in it as well so we've now got, we did just have four generations playing my granddad's retired from bowls but obviously most of the people in the club all the juniors or young ones are coming through is because they've got family members who already play bowls. As a club we're doing okay, we're all right. Um, we're like any other club, we could we could do with a, with a lot more new members coming in, but that's the same for every bowling club these days. Outside the rap we're doing very well. The club uh, is a very successful club in this area um, and we're starting, hopefully start to turn that as well with the junior section. Um, although we do do quite well with the under 25s, junior competition. Um, basically by, by the coaching that we're doing now, um, worked with Bull Scotland to have brought up an initiative to try and encourage young, young people into the game. So we approach the coaching sessions completely differently to how it was when I first took my coaching badge. Um, we now, what we do with them is we, we play a lot of games on the green, things like battleships and find, finders keepers and knots and crosses. And, and I've been rolling that programme out since 2019, um, primary schools in particular. Um, unfortunately, Covid did put a stop on us for a couple of years, but this year we've really kicked off a lot again, where we do a different version of bowls within the school, but it's on the same principles, and we've started to find that it is having an impact. Originally I was scared. <laughs> Originally it was kind of daunting to think, OK, now I need to go in and try and see if I can beat the people that my older brother goes in and tries to beat. Once I was in the competition and I got to my first round, I was like, oh, no, no, I can. I can hold my own against these guys. It's, of course I can. It's bulls. It's not like I'm fighting them in a ring. It's like the way I, how tall I am or my sex rent doesn't change how I play bulls. So when I got to that first round and it was the K&D singles, it was the first time they opened it up. I was like, okay, maybe I can do this. And I did. I went all the way and I won it in the first year that they opened it up. So at first, daunting, scary, but once I got through it, it was incredibly like proud, but also giving like, no, of course, of course I could do it because it's it's balls. It was a it was a big change. I was delighted for it. I've been one of those people who have, who have been pushing for these sort of competitions. Um, we we ourselves as a club we introduced a singles competition in this club, a singles championship. And that came in last year, which we've called it, it's an open championship, and it's called the Joyce Miller Open Championship. Now, Joyce Miller was one of our most successful bowling bowlers in this club. Joyce actually represented Scotland at the Commonwealth Games. She was a very regarded coach through Bowl Scotland as well, and won umpteen championships in the ladies. It was a, a bit of a mark of respect that I wanted to show to Joyce that we should have this competition where it's open to all male, all female members to compete. It's a sport that everybody can play and so it was a great opportunity, obviously in our own part for Port Beyond to, to get that opportunity. It should have been open up years ago, it shouldn't have been, you know, separated because it shouldn't matter. We have quite a few of them, but one of them is uh, Pauline Wilson. She's she plays for the Bull Scotland team and she's uh she's in the the paraplegic team so she is and I got to play against her and she's quite much a great inspiration for me just the way that she doesn't let anything kind of get in her way and she's very much just very much believes that women can beat the guys just as just as easy so everybody can get involved no matter what your ability is what your age is anything that's stopping you from doing any other sport you can step on the bowling green and play it's very, very inclusive for everybody. It's a great sport for absolutely everyone. But for me, because I've got 
a back condition called scoliosis, which I'll say my spine's an S shape, it's not straight. I can't, it kind of restricts a lot of my movements. So the one thing I'll say about this sport is that it's incredibly like open to anyone that's got any disabilities. I mean, Pauline Wilson, she's missing half a leg. So, and she plays, and it's a sport where people who are blind play as well. You can't see the footman, they use a string, and they, they hold the string, and that's how they find their centre line. sport that's so versatile, and you don't get many sports like that. But it doesn't actually change the rules of the game at all. It's like football, it changes it. If you're disabled, you have to like, do it different. The, the rules change. Whereas the lawn bowls, the rules are exact same. I can go into a game and play against someone who is blind, and it'll be pretty much the same as playing against someone who's the same as me the rules just don't change. So that's the one thing I will say about the sport, it's so versatile and so open. I think it's a great club, I think it's a great setting. I think uh, like any any club that you'll go to, and bowling clubs you'll go to, it's the members that make the club. And I do think we've got a great bunch of members in this bowling club. Just we're all very, very friendly. We'll always welcome you in. Um, the competition within this club is fantastic. It really is. A, a, it's a tough, tough club to win anything in and the level of competition is superb. But we have members here who are happy to just, they just want to play bowls. And they're not that really overly fussed about whether they go and win things. And then you've got the members who are very, very competitive. So it's a great blend that we have. We're very family orientated. The club was, but it's becoming more like that because we're bringing in more and more juniors. And it's good to have that atmosphere about the place. And as I say, it's a great atmosphere in the club as well. Bowling on the surface is a sport that's on its way out. The public perception of the sport is, is, you know, it's an excuse for your granddad to sneak off on a Saturday afternoon and get a pint. In reality, it's a thriving sport that's only growing larger by the day. It's been around for 5,000 years. It's not going to be going anywhere. The dedication the players of the sport have in keeping it alive and passing it down to the next generation is nothing short of remarkable. I'll leave the conclusion to Kenny. I would say come along, have a go. Go to your nearest bowling club. In fact, the younger you get into it, the more you'll get out of it. Um, so I would say encourage any any young player, come along. If you've got a chance, visit your bowling club, local bowling club, and just ask them. They'll get you on the green. Come along, try something different. Um, you might find it's a sport that you really just take to, but unless you try it, you'll never know. Thank you.